Hi guys and welcome to another video. I have been looking for uh, Eastern, uh, so-called Eastern clones of the ZX Spectrum for quite some time now. And here today I have the Didactic M from Slovakia, uh, which is a ZX Spectrum clone came in this box. Sorry, I missed the unboxing part. And the uh, previous owner was kind enough to provide me with uh, schematics as well. So very nice. Uh, the box was complete um, with the power, the original power brick, uh, and, it, and all the cables that we need. Uh, I have it now. I was trying to figure out how to connect it to the TV, but I'll get back to this in a while. Uh, this 15, uh, both sides 15 uh, cable, probably used for the uh, tape. The original power brick, like I said here. Um, doesn't get very hot, looks robust and reliable. Um, and here is the cable for the TV, which actually is kind of weird. It has two RF sockets, the one is plugged in, the other one is uh, available. And I was trying to connect it for quite some time now to the tuner, and some uh, assuming that it's going to be uh, channel 36, but it wasn't the case. And so I connected the um, uh, RCA, uh, the video output. Uh, at the back we can see Sinclair joystick um, ports and Kempston joystick uh, compatible ports, but uh, edge connectors only, so there's going to be some more work and uh, interface in order to connect um, 9 D-Sub classic um, joysticks in there. Uh, the system bus, the expansion bus, what we used to say um, the same for the Spectrum. Um, the uh, MG, I, assuming it's the tape, magnetophone, something, um, power, like I said, video out and TV out. Uh, that is what we can find at the back of the machine. The interesting thing, which I like very much, is the warranty seal. As you can see, didactic here, uh, underneath the sticker is a screw, and in total there there are six of them. Uh, three at the top of the case, one, two, and one, three uh, under the sticker, and three at the bottom. And uh, silly looking uh, plastic feet, April 91. Uh, with a very very early serial number like 2339 uh, the fourth uh, month of 1991 by uh, Didactic Scalica Limited so uh, again <laughs> this is a pleasure always to see that the machine hasn't been uh, open uh, before there's nothing to see um, on the sides, no on-off switch or anything I was hoping. Only a reset uh, switch on the keyboard with a um, LED indicator. And uh, getting back now to the cable, um, uh, here we can find the socket which um, outputs two different cables. Uh, one to the light gray one should be used for the connection with the monitor and the typical gray one like this uh, should be used for TV connection instead and so we have very smart uh, way to distribute the um, signal according to the equipment which is uh, yeah, a smart way to do it um, but in the beginning I was confused and I was trying to do it the other way around and the RCA for the uh, monitor is very very high good quality uh, RCA jack like this one here so um, the mysteries has been solved and I managed to get it up and running I was trying also to get the picture on channel 36 because I was just thinking it should be or could be channel 36 but it wasn't the case after a, a, a while I managed to get a bad quality signal but uh, on channel 42 instead I don't know if that was something that uh, it was designed this way or slipped over time um, but anyways it, it, we can get a, a, an RF signal uh, on the 
typical uh, tuner on uh, channel 42. Anyways, that's the least I have to uh, think of right now as we have the excellent monitor out. The other cable that um, was made for the magnetophone or the tape uh, recorder is 15 on each side and um, male and I was thinking maybe I should do something, I should put a round uh, female and get the signals from uh, the end to supposedly uh, going to the uh, Tesla uh, tape recorder and I should get the tape in and tape out signals from here and make them um, mono jacks like the way uh, Spectrum used to have uh, so I guess we should try to turn it to mic and uh, ear mono jack connections. Moving now to the power brick, um, which uh, was made with Tesla components for the most part. Again, needs recapping at some point, but we know that um, for now it's pretty stable and working fine, matching the color of the computer and the design, and it's uh, beautiful. Uh, the keyboard although it looks much much better than the one that we can find uh, on the spectrum uh, trust me it's a disaster it's very steep you cannot type fast and the keys can be stuck at any point in time so uh, of course we can find the commands uh, printed on the keys and uh, you can uh, start typing Sinclair Basic uh, actually programs uh, the way we used to do with the Spectrum but the uh, quality of the keyboard is really cheap. If you have uh, patience with the keyboard then you can uh, make it through. Um, we have a power LED indicator which is good. We have the reset button uh, right here which is good. Um, Apparently what they try to do is to make a better spectrum. Now uh, coming to the characters on the screen and what you might find interesting is that they are kind of bold compared to the ones we used to have on the ZX Spectrum. This is because of the ULA. It's been another ULA, uh, the one from the Pentagon computers from, from Russia in order to keep the cost uh, lower and make the computer cheaper for the public. I was trying also now to find the pinout for the tape recorder and so we have uh, one output to tape from point one, uh, input from tape uh, point three and pin two common used, uh, commonly used as ground. So let's uh, try to to picture what we have to deal with. Here I have uh, a female 5D connected already um, to the cable, a female 5D, this one. Uh, so this will give us the ability to get from um, the cable uh, one signal for input, one signal for output and one common ground and then we can uh, drive a couple of mono uh, jacks, those two, in order to have one, uh, say this one for instance for loading and that the other one for saving our programs. And again it's not the stereotype, it's the monotype of um, jack to be used. And uh, we should have the other end connected one signal uh, to one jack, the other one on the other jack and will be um, a common ground shared among those two. So uh, those are the parts that we need. We already have the original cable right here and uh, we should construct the extension to um, mono jack with just a few parts needed and enjoy the loading uh, capability and the saving capability uh, of our programs the way we used to do with the uh, Spectrum. Um, Didactic M uh, is based around the Z80 of course, uh, the same CPU, but it was uh, slightly overclocked at uh, 4 MHz 
in order to overcome some waiting states um, from the memory and because of the particular ELA used. Now at this point I was trying to play it smart and lazy and so I have found uh, the same cable uh, for loading games um, 5D2 ER jack from Coco uh, machine. Uh, I believe it's the same for Dragon 32 that I found in my spares but I found out that um, <laughs> the pin now is different and so only 2.2 which is the common ground is the same but the input and output um, to and from the tape is different so I cannot use um, the Coco or the Dragon 32 uh, converter the, um, cable I need to fix uh, my own so anyways um, I just gave it a, a chance so back to the spares and let's uh, get on with the construction of the cable and hopefully we can um, try some games um, and see what this guy can do so now we're going to see the side of the connector which is re in uh, reverse to the side of the computer so point one uh, the notch should be down here and the point one here of connection is uh, output to tape and point three on the other side is input from tape and this one in the middle which is marked as point two is going to be common ground so three uh, solder points we have and then we should drive three to one of these jacks and one to the other and make a common ground in between those two again it's one and three uh, common point is uh, ground so uh, in total we're gonna be using three cables out of four but in reality I'm going to use all four and drive um, the mono jacks on the other side um, coming from the female 5D and then when the construction is uh, over and the cable um, has the connectors ready and the last thing uh, that we should do is to tie uh, the grounds together um, from both um, uh, jacks. So the first uh, uh, side is ready, the 5 uh, Dean female is ready and on the other side we have black, red, yellow so I'm going to pick uh, red and yellow to carry um, the signals and I'm going to be using white and the black as ground so we should have this kind of um, th these pairs uh, I should prepare and then by the end of the construction I should tie together the black and um, the white cables to share uh, in order to share common ground and that will be all I hope and so before we can start uh, the test and before I can um, extend the original cable uh, to our nice little construction here. Here is a point where we have the common ground uh, together tied up and I should insulate this spot carefully and then we can uh, try to uh, load some games from my old uh, school uh, cassette uh, recorder over here. I have found some spectrum tapes uh, to start with um, in the beginning 16k programs and then f full 48k uh, games to be loaded but again let me just um, first insulate this um, common ground connection here and um, we can uh, get started and so I'm so looking forward to loading a game successfully tonight I have the cable already connected to the computer our little extension goes to the tape player here and uh, I guess we should start with um, the test uh, both ends are into place and let me adjust the volume uh, less than full maximum and um, let's try to hit load and start and the first indication uh, that everything looks good uh, so far is that the changing of the border colors uh, from white to whatever blue and red and yeah we can see something is coming up and it's 
our game. It's uh, our test uh, tape. So I guess we did everything right and uh, looks good so far. Let it run, let it load and um, yeah I'm happy with this because uh, otherwise there was no other way to load um, games onto the Didactic uh, M machine apart from the um, cassette player back in the day it was Tesla with the appropriate port so it looks good so far I'm going to run this um, first uh, as a, uh, the initial test it's a 16k game so I want to see if everything is fine with the machine so after that what I'm going to do right after that is to load a 48k another game and uh, make sure that everything looks fine and here comes uh, our Cytron, the 48k game. It's actually an adventure game but with graphics. Uh, pretty impressive game from back in the day. And um, I won't uh, play around with it. No gameplay whatsoever. I'm just checking that it's going to be loaded successfully and that will be all uh, to summarize uh, success and um, that the machine actually works full 48k and uh, one interesting point here is that the machine comes uh, initially with uh, 64 kilobytes of ROM but only 48k are available for the user another interesting thing is the uh, beep sound uh, on every key pressed like this uh, the machine does every time you press a key there is a distinctive uh, beep sound instant uh, sound so that you know that the key is actually pressed we're moving on with another uh, game uh, just to for the sake of the test and um, I guess I'm gonna be calling this a wrap uh, in a while and I'm happy that this machine actually uh, came to me uh, in working state and uh, only a custom uh, cable was uh, what was needed after all now the first model out of this didactic uh, series was the Gamma uh, didactic uh, Gamma came out in 1987 it was running of course over Z80 again at 3.5 megahertz and the successor to the Gamma was this one the didactic M uh, came out in 1990 and um, the Z80 uh, was running over 4 megahertz and um, it had also uh, this one this model has also a so-called better keyboard and it was uh, equipped with a better ROM version now I don't really want to Im even think of what this previous keyboard of the Gamma used to be if this is supposedly a better keyboard the production for Didactic M uh, stopped by 1992 and uh, it could be found uh, in uh, schools around Czechoslovakia back then um, so it's not very hard to be found here is our cable and uh, here is our system we have reviewed today um, special cables uh, came along with uh, the power brick and everything included and uh, it was a successful uh, uh, purchase if you ask me um, not very cheap but uh, it's worth um, every penny um, as a um, piece of history of the Eastern so-called Eastern models of or clones of the ZX Spectrum uh, back in the 90s and to be honest I would like to get my hands on the didactic uh, Gamma uh, 2 in the future thanks for watching consider subscribing I'll be catching you soon bye